It's Sunday. My coffee's way too hot. It's not tea. I actually don't like tea that much. I tried to, and the only thing I can drink is chai latte. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today, you're thinking, Monica, why are you uploading on a Sunday? Aren't you supposed to like rest on the weekends? Well, yes, but... There's this thing going on that it's called 7 on Sunday and one of the things that I regret the most about starting my channel as late, well, restarting my channel as late as I did is that I missed out on Top 5 Wednesday because it kind of just like fizzled out but then I found out that there's this thing called 7 on Sunday which is basically Top 5 Wednesday but it's 7 on Sunday so I was like this is my opportunity to redeem myself and participate in something that I really enjoy. Now, I'm gonna try, <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep these videos really short, really concise. I, I think that these are like my extra little videos for the week and I don't wanna bog you down with 40 minute reviews of books because I do that during the week. I will leave the Goodreads group. <laughs> That was really hard to say down below in case any of you wanted to participate. So today is May 17th and the prompt for today is underhyped books. Talk about the books you consider to be underrated and why you wish they were more talked about. I, I hate doing this because it makes me sound like a special snowflake, but I feel that most of the things I read are underrated or at least a good part of them just simply because I don't read a lot of YA fantasy, therefore everything I read is underrated and honestly you're gonna see a lot of repeats here just because these are my favorite books and I find them underrated on YouTube so the first book I'm going to talk about you have actually never heard me talk about but it's The Long Walk by Stephen King but it was actually published under his pen name Richard Bachman Bachman? Bachman I don't I it doesn't matter, it's Stephen King. Why do I like this book? First of all, this book is kind of about a dystopian society where every year, I think, yeah, every year you celebrate the long walk. And basically this is like a very, very long walk and people get killed off during the walk. You can't stop for, I think, more than five seconds or you get shot and you can't, basically, you can't, you can't stop walking. And then the last survivor, wins a lot of money, wins all the glory, and it's an amazing, amazing book. And I've heard out there that I think in the 90s it was actually required reading for some people. So why do I think that you should read this book? You should read this book because I feel this book captures what it's like to go through life always wanting more and not realizing what you have in the moment and I feel the characters in the book go through that. Now this is a really brutal book, this is a book that is not easy to read but I feel that if you give it the chance, I think this is Stephen King at his best. This is not about, you know, aliens, this is not about anything other than the desire of people who feel they have been wronged somehow in life to better their circumstances and not only that but it's a book about how do you create camaraderie when you know that you're gonna you know you're gonna have to step on people to get to where you want to be so this book is amazing and i don't i've i don't i don't think i've heard even the stephen king people talk about this book and i honestly think it's probably one of his best works and i really recommend that you pick it up i know stephen king is a really controversial figure right now because of something he tweeted to be honest i don't really follow those things um it call me a bad person or a bad booktuber or whatever i do know that he is a controversial figure also for how he depicts women luckily for you only boys get to participate in the long walk so he just doesn't talk about women all that much in this book and I think that that's to Stephen King's not his detriment anyway so it's it's an amazing book I think this is the only book that has ever actually made me hold my breath and made my heart race in fear for a protagonist that's all I'm gonna say about it because I don't want to spoil it <laughs> book number two you've heard me talk about before on this channel if you have been with me any amount of time but that is the Shadow Children series by Margaret Peterson Haydix. Now this is a very strange book because it's disguised as a children's book or like a young YA because the main character is 12 years old and the book is 
ye short but let me tell you i actually think this is an adult book like i wouldn't feel comfortable with anybody under 16 reading this book because this touches on some very serious subjects now this is a book about another dystopian society where you're not allowed to have more than two children and actually women get a procedure done so that they don't have more children after two but sometimes things happen sometimes people have money and that they decide they want a girl after they have two boys sometimes people just get pregnant and don't tell anyone and abandon their kids out in the streets and this book talks about all of that now what happens if you do get pregnant and the government finds out you have an extra kid they kill them that's what I'm telling you, this book is not for kids and this series gets more and more and more and more serious as it goes on. We meet a bunch of different children that are third children. This book talks about PTSD, this book talks about the unfairness of how wealth is distributed and how people in power can get away with things that poor people can't. And I just think it's a wonderful book. I think that writing of a 12 year old boy that I think that by the end of the book, he's 16. I, I can't remember. I, I'm sorry, by the end of the series, he's 16. I can't remember is really good. I think the parents are portrayed really well. I think the both both adults and children are written in a way where I found it believable and not I don't know and not in that way that we tend to see today where we write kids as if they were mini adults um and i love the growth of the main character luke uh throughout the series and i think this is a great series also to binge because all of the books i think i have them back here i don't know if you can see them they're so small i think one of these like all of these books equal a white male sphere so <laughs> it's a really good series to binge and it really brings up interesting subjects and again the characters are just divine the next book you've also probably seen me talk about a thousand times because it's one of my favorites and that is the magicians by lev grossman now the magicians by lev grossman is about a group of teenagers that instead of going to a normal university go to a magical university the thing about this is that this is dark academia at its best this is a book about bad people doing bad things and about brilliance and about how magic sometimes when you have it is probably not all that magical and not all that it's cut out to be so this book is actually like a deconstruction of the magical school magical wardrobe genre you know it, magical magical schools magical children that kind of stuff and i think that the series gets better with time and i think that you should read it because right now dark academia is really popular there are a lot of books popping up and I think you should read it because it's actually really well put within that genre so if you enjoy that kind of stuff this book is really for you and I think I really like reading about really bad main characters and really real people like I don't I don't, I don't know how to explain this but when I like a book the most is when I feel like the characters feel real like I, I can feel that this person would exist in the real world and I feel that everyone that you read about in this book even though they seem horrible we've all met these people we might have been these people I know definitely that I found myself really really mirrored within these characters and I think that it's amazing to think that magic would be just as magical if we had it in the real world but i think the reality is magic would be would become mundane if we had it in the real world and in that vein i also love that in this book magic is not something that an ability that an, an innate ability that you have because a lot of people might have the innate ability but it's your ability to hone into that and to really study and to be the very best and to sacrifice yourself for it that gives you magical powers i really appreciate that because i really don't like it when magic is just like oh i have magic and i can use it no i i always feel like with these things there should be some sacrifice involved and this book definitely gives you that all right <laughs> keeping in the vein with books i've talked about a bunch in my channel we've got the monstermologist by greg yancey i i think if you saw my dark academia book recommendation video you've seen what this is about but just in case this is about a secret society of scientists that study monsters which are not real monsters like not in the supernatural sense but monsters that are just biological beings that have evolved in ways that 
we don't see often and they're so endangered and so rare that people associate them with actual supernatural monsters but are there real monsters out there and who is the real monster now the main character in this book is Palinor Wathrop I think he is an incredible Sherlock Holmes e kind of dark academia Sherlock Holmes character and this story is told from the perspective of his assistant which is the son of his previous assistant which he accidentally murdered so again we're gonna get into ideas of who is a monster what is a monster and who is a man I'm gonna put that in who is the monster and who is the man we get into the whole idea of what is a monster who is a monster and also what are you willing to sacrifice for this search of knowledge this book is just amazing and i just i can't believe more people don't read it I, I will say this book has a lot of body horror and i didn't mention it but with this one not in this one but in the next few i don't remember in which one there are trigger warnings for sexual assault death of a sibling and in this one i will put like a trigger warning for bodily horror there are descriptions that I don't care about for me they don't get to me but for a lot of people might not be to their liking but if you don't mind that and you really like dark academia this book is for you all right if you saw <laughs> I love that all of these books are books that I've recommended before but I wanted to keep it realistic to books that I think are underhyped and that you would like but if you saw my science fiction recommendation video you would have seen this book which again white balance is throwing it right off you can't see the cover but either way it's in Spanish so I'll just translate it for you this is Jeanette Winterson's blue uh, not blue planet the, the, the title would be actually blue planet in English but it's called stone gods and I'm gonna put it down because it's just kind of blind you the whole time I'll put a picture of the English cover right here while I speak this book is about humans and humans have basically destroyed earth with nuclear warfare we have gone over the rails with like what we accept as uh, age of consent sex and we are basically the rococo period of technology times 10. like that that's the best way i can describe it so what do we got to do we got to find another planet and in this case there is a planet b but that is only a small part of this story. This story is actually about humanity, about love, about what is really important and about the cyclical nature of humanity. How we repeat the same mistakes, how love repeats itself through space and time. And I think that if you really want to get into some really interesting sci-fi literary fiction, this is definitely the book for you. Also, there is a very beautiful female to female romance in this book. I am doing a whole video about female to female romances because sadly, it seems that that is not something that we read about a lot. I think if you saw the movie Interstellar and you liked it, I still believe 100% that Christopher Nolan must have read this book before he embarked on the adventure of making that movie i remember watching it and i thought wow <laughs> this is kind of the stone gods but light <laughs> so uh not in a science aspect i'm not talking in the science aspect but i'm talking about in the human love love for your family love for your friends love for your planet and destroying the planet aspects and also some of the planets that feature in that film i feel we see in this book okay this book <laughs> i just realized most of these books are either like dystopian or dark magical so but you've seen me talk about this i love this book this book and i share a lot in common but that is magic for liars by sarah gailey i've talked about this book ad nauseum but basically this book is about twin sisters one of them has magic abilities the other does not the one that does not is a private investigator and she gets called in to investigate the death of a magician in the school her sister works at the mystery aspect of this book is not a big deal i actually had the whole plot figured out in my head i think probably like a third into this book but that's not what's important about this book and that's what pisses me off about when people go into this book and i understand that because it's marketed as a murder mystery a lot of people will go into it wanting a murder mystery but that's not it i think you should read this book to read about relationships 
sibling relationships, sibling rivalry, and the ambition to be great and to be the greatest that you can be at something. And again, this book talks about PTSD. This book talks about sibling rivalry. It talks about the death of a parent. I'm not spoiling anything. This is right at the beginning. And obviously there is a death in the book that is really gruesome. But if you can stomach that and if you want to read a, a book that really tugs on your heartstrings about what it means to be a sister, what it means to be a friend, and also what it means to feel inferior to someone and not be able to feel bad about it and to convince yourself that it's fine and everything is fine when in reality you want to be magical too. But again, this book poses the question, is magic really all that magical if we have it in the real world? Or would magic just become another one of those things that is mundane because it's part of the real world? And I love that. I don't. I know a lot of people don't like that, but if you are like me and you love the idea that we are not... I mean, we are special. Don't get me wrong. I know we are all special, but there is something in this book that asks the question, like, we are special. So do we need to be any more special than just being ourselves? I love that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like fangirling about this book. I love it so much. So 100% recommend if you want to read about complicated sibling family relationships, if you want to read about what it's like to feel lesser than other people and what it would be like to be surrounded by magical ability when you yourself are not that magical. Isn't that how we all feel sometimes? And the final book I have to recommend is actually a graphic novel and I haven't heard anybody talking about this and it's The Magic Order by Mark Miller and Olivier Coypel. I think that's how you say his name. I haven't heard anybody talking about this book. Now this book, I think I've seen Again, a theme with my books. This book is graphic. If you don't like body horror, this book is not like I'm looking for like oh, oh, images to show you the, the art style. And it's hard to find an, uh, like an, an image here that is not like, Ooh, I don't want anybody to see that. <laughs> this is really creepy and makes your skin crawl. But again, this has everything I want in it. This has a magical family, complicated sibling relationships, what it's like to feel like the outcast, and what you're willing to sacrifice and what you're willing to do to protect those that you love and also to protect magic. I love these kinds of stories. I love it. I love this urban magic. Magic isn't all that it's cracked up to be and when you have magic, it's I don't know how to explain it. I guess it's like what I feel when I see somebody with blue eyes. I'm like, wow, it must be amazing to go through life with blue eyes. And my husband has blue eyes and he's like, I don't even think about it. You know, I think that that's what I feel about magic in the real world. Like that's what it would be like that you would always want it. But if you had it, it would just be like having brown or blonde hair or blue eyes. It would just be another thing about you. And I really love books that like delve into that so yeah this book is great but again if you're not into body horror forget about it don't read this book this book has like extreme trigger warnings for like brutal murders like actually being depicted that's it those are my top seven underrated books that i wish that you would read or that i think that you should read if you're into the things that i said about them and i don't want to make this any longer because i already saw that it's pretty long and it shouldn't have been really long but that's what happens when you talk about things you love, right? So without further ado, me and my Slytherin cup, which is the size of my face, are gonna have a moment together and I will see you in the next seven on Sunday. <laughs> Bye guys.